Okay, so given that the Nupal is essentially a derivative of the MVRV, let's go back to basics and look at the MVRV ratio. Again, this is the unrealized profit or loss modeled out into an oscillator. So we're basically looking at what is the deviation between price and the realized price, which is the average cost basis for every coin in the supply. Keep that in mind because we're going to touch on the AVIV ratio, which is a slightly different interpretation, but the MVRV captures the average cost basis of every coin, whether they're Satoshis, whether they're lost, whether they're the guy who bought yesterday, everything is included in the MVRV ratio. Now, what I've color coded this by as well is looking at different standard deviations. It will flag red when we're above one standard deviation. So that's looking at when the amount of profit in the system is significantly higher than its long-term mean, right? We're starting to get into euphoric phases. And we can once again identify these market cycles. Prior to breaking the all-time high, we're typically below one standard deviation. When we get above it, we can get some distance above it. So this is what I'm talking about with the euphoric phase. Things can really blow out the top side. Now, of course, we could put different standard deviations here. You could put two or three or whatever models uh, certainly suit your analysis or trading strategy. But in this instance, we're just doing very, very simple plus one or plus half, minus one, things like that, just to demonstrate how these cycles tend to move around. And as you can see, we are poking our head up into the enthusiastic phase. So you could reasonably consider that we bump our head here when we broke the previous all-time high. And previously, as we were trying to break the all-time high in 2016 and 17, there were several fairly deep corrections. You can actually see how much MVRV pulled back during those periods of time. Some of these were 25, 30, sometimes even 40% corrections. So it just gives people a bit of a framework that we are moving into a regime that is certainly, historically speaking, does see more upside but it also has much, much deeper corrections. And in many ways, this is what investors are looking for is trying to identify these relatively elevated periods of risk when you've got you know, just too much capital coming in at one time. And sometimes it, you, know, you just oversaturate demand for that period of time. Corrections, consolidations, and essentially pullbacks are typically what happens around that time. So we can start to assume that we're getting into the territory where a correction would actually make sense uh, looking at it from the unrealized profit or loss perspective.